In this video, I'll explain you how Jetpack Compose works and life cycle of composables. So for example, you are writing some compose function like this, my composable and inside that you have column and then two text. So first you need to understand what is composition. So composition means a tree like structure that will describe your UI. Like, like here you can see the top level is my composable, which is a composable function and then column, which is also a composable and then two more. So whatever composable function you are writing, so they will create a tree hierarchy that will describe your UI. But we need to understand how compose function works and how they update our UI on the base of some variables. So first when you are writing your compose function, suppose this is your composable and you are passing some variable in it. And when your code runs, the initial value of this variable will be used and, and we will draw the initial UI. Suppose the show error message is false. That means we will not enter in this condition and we will only draw login input. So this initial drawing of your UI and initial creation of this tree is called as composition. And in future, suppose this variable is changed and then we will again run this composable and we know that this condition is true. That means we will also draw this in our UI. That means this function will be also added in our composition tree. So this updating of our tree is called as recomposition. And this is what we call the life cycle of a composable. So first we enter the initial composition where we draw the initial UI and then we will go through recomposition zero or more times. If any variable is changing, then there will be more recomposition. And if there is not, suppose in this example, there is no input value and uh, there is no mutable state. So this function will never get changed. That means here will be no recomposition, but in another function there can be. So after this recomposition, then we will leave the composition if we are closing our application or if we are leaving the screen. So this is the whole life cycle of our composable. But there is one important thing that you need to know that if this variable is just a normal variable that cannot trigger recomposition whatever data or whatever variable you are passing to your composable if you need to trigger that recomposition so those variables or those data should be a value of state object so here is a very simple example this is a text state object that i am creating with the with this mutable state of so this will give me a mutable state object which is eventually a state object so I'm using this text state object inside of this column where this text is using it. So let me log this and then there is a button. Let me wrap that inside of a column. So on that button, if I am clicking, then I am updating the value of this text state. So text state dot value plus equal to a star and that button is showing me a text. So let me add the log here also. Button recomposed. So what is the flow? So first of all, initial recomposition, this text state value will be created and a composition tree will be created with all these value first column. And then inside a column, a text will be there and below that a button and then a text. You can easily see the hierarchy here also. So this text is using our text state dot value. And whenever I'm updating this dot value thing, then because this is a state object, so all the composable who are using the value of this state object will be recomposed and all the composables which are not using this state object will be skipped. So there is this button and right now we cannot see any text. And if I'm checking the log cat, here you can see column recompose and then button recompose because this is actually initial composition one and one. And uh, if I am clicking on this button, so the column should be recomposed, but the button should be skipped. So this thing should not be called. So let me click. So I added a padding up here. If I'm clicking, then one star is here. So that means column should be recomposed. So first column is called one time initial composition. This is also initial composition and this is recomposition. If I'm clicking on button again, then column is recomposed. But here you can see the button is not getting recomposed because state value is not being used in this button and uh, that's why this button composable is getting skipped. If you want to learn about the internal working of Jetpack Compose then make sure to subscribe the channel and I will be updating a video very soon. So this recomposition that means this thing is uh, getting called again and the text is getting updated on every click of the button. So this thing is only possible because we are using here a state object. If I am using a normal string value and this is not a value this is just a this is just a normal string so if i am clicking then this text state will definitely get updated but uh, this will not trigger the recomposition let me log the value of this string here so you can see column recompose bottom recompose because obviously they will be always called in initial composition if i am clicking on the button 
there you can see text value is getting updated but uh, there is no column recompose that means the ui is also not getting updated if i'm clicking it multiple times there you can see text value is always getting updated this is obvious because we are updating it on every click but this is not triggering our recomposition because it is not a state object so i hope you understood how this recomposition is working and when they will not get triggered because this is a side effect for our composables and uh, this is not a mutable state even if you are defining it outside and you are not using this remember so still this thing will not gonna work this will not trigger recomposition there is one more important thing as now you know this compose function will be called multiple times so that means you should not be doing any heavy operation inside these compositions here inside this function we are doing a heavy operation of load network image so that should not be present inside of a composable because this function can be called multiple times and that will affect your application performance and one more important thing to learn here is if you see this example inside this composable function we are passing a list of movies and then we are using a for loop to show a movie overview for all these movies suppose there are two objects inside this list that means this movie overview will be two times so if you see the tree here inside this movie screen a column is there and then two movie overview composables so suppose this was our state object and uh, we are adding a new movie at the first point at our zeroth index that means this whole tree will be recreated if you are adding a movie item to the last then the first two object will be still remain there and a new object will be added at last but if you are adding a movie object at the zeroth index then both of these will be moved to down and uh, that will cause your compose tree to be recreated and that can affect your performance if you see here you can see you can see the color of first two movie objects movie overview objects and if you are adding a new object at the zeroth index then all these three will be new objects so remember this thing whenever you are creating your composition tree so that can affect your performance so make sure to handle all these conditions and how that can be handled we have to uniquely identify all the movie overview objects and uh, that can be done by any id so so here if you see inside our for loop we have to uniquely identify every movie object so we will use this key composable so this key is a utility composable function that will help you group a particular composable item and uh, map it with some key that will uniquely identify that object inside this composition tree so this time i am passing this movie.id as the key for my movie overview objects so this will be unique in our composition tree it is not mandatory that uh, this key should be globally unique but uh, but inside this column this key should be unique that means uh, if there are 10 items inside this column so all these 10 items should have a unique key so with using this key even if we are adding a new item at the first index first position then the new item will be added and both of these items will be moved down that means whole tree will be not recreated but uh, just a new item will be added so that is a pretty good optimization if you are working with a large list and that's why you might have heard of this lazy column they have this parameter of passing a key for your unique list objects so i hope now you understood this important cases of composition and recomposition so you can optimize your app performance by skipping unnecessary recomposition of composables so our main purpose is skipping the unnecessary recomposition and that can be done by using a stable annotation so if you are using a custom object here suppose a data class user and i am passing some values here suppose it is a string here and if i have to pass this user object inside of any composable function i am creating so that should be marked as stable if you want to avoid any unnecessary recomposition even when this user object is not changing so first you should know that uh, all the primitive types boolean integer and all these will be by default considered as stable for our compose compiler so if you are creating a ui state like this that by default will be unstable and if you are using this at the rate stable so your compose compiler will now favor skipping and do smart recompositions that means that means if none of these values are changing then recomposition will not get triggered so just check your code if you need this table annotation to avoid any unnecessary recomposition and i hope you like this video if yes make sure to subscribe the channel like this video and access the android interview play playlist from the description and thank you for watching